sound of online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Yes. You make me feel like I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Hello. Hold on, Rick. I'm just going to do my introduction and we'll be right to you. Thank you. Her mission to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. And if you don't mind muting your mic, that would be awesome. And welcome. My name is Dr. Marissa, your cheerleader for a happy life. And you're listening to my weekly talk radio show called Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, a show about hope and not CNN, constantly negative news. So there's no gossip and no scandal and no K words exclusively at Universal Broadcasting Network, Triple W, UBN Radio every Tuesday at naturally high noon California time. And I'm here with my awesome station manager, Tony Sweet, and my sound engineer, Eric Montgomery. And uh, I have my very special friend, Sandy, spiritual nurse, running the chat room today. And today is a groundbreaking episode, according to Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, when I told him I was having the first radio show for our deaf community. I've always been drawn to the beauty of American Sign Language. And when I saw Sharon, communicate with the passion and beauty on the agape stage i knew that somehow i had to work with her so please help me welcome to the studio sharon pierre lewis (laughs) and why bring sharon to this particular show because my guest is one of the most beneficial presences on the planet today he's been recognized on Larry King Live, by Oprah, the Academy Awards, with a powerful documentary, The Cove, and free dolphins around the world. The irony is, Rick O'Berry started as the original dolphin trainer on the beloved movie Flipper, which was probably the beginning of the world's love affair with dolphins. Now this same trainer has been arrested 70 times for releasing dolphins back into the wild so they won't be trained. I watched the movie a few months ago for the first time with my daughters, and I was so moved, I was compelled to get on the phone and invite Rick to the show so that my listeners worldwide could support his work on the planet. So without further ado, please help me give a standing ovation to my guest, Rick O'Berry. And Rick is joining us from Japan, Taiji, Japan. Hello, Rick. Ohio gozaimasu. Oh, uh, that's how, nice. That's how you say good morning in uh, in Japan. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So I, Dude, say I that again. Ohio gozaimasu. Can you can you translate that, Sharon? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that that means good morning, and uh, so it's about let's see, it's a little after five o'clock in the morning. Here and in, thank in you time. for yes, very early. <laughs> And I so appreciate you. And xie xie actually is Chinese for thank you. So that's I know. My I, I have a Chinese daughter, a nine-year-old daughter from uh, the uh, Pearl River Delta in China. Wow. We're connected in other ways. <laughs> that's oh, wonderful. How, how old are your daughters? You mentioned, I heard you yeah. say your daughters watch the code. Yeah, my daughters are 16. Chloe May. May is Chinese for beautiful. And my 14-year-old is Sarah Wei, and Wei is Chinese. My father named their middle names, and it's Chinese for serenity. So they oh, are, are they Chinese. They are are Chinese. They Chinese? I am full Chi- Well, actually, oh. that's not true. I am Chinese with a dash of Mongolian. So oh. don't so don't take oh. me off. <laughs> or oh, I'll come well, at you daughter, with my horse. <laughs> my daughter is a May also. Her name is May Li. Oh, that means beautiful, but you know that. May, I do, yeah. May Lee. Beautiful. I am so grateful that you're on this show for many, many different reasons. Um, one, because uh, I collect people that do beneficial things on the planet, and you certainly qualify for that. And you're involved with one of my favorite living things on the earth, which are dolphins. So I'm going to try to take 
all of my listeners back to the beginning because I was kind of surprised when I started uh, celebrating the fact that you were coming on my show. I had many people who did not know the story. So if you wouldn't mind and indulge me and start at the beginning with the movie Flipper, which everybody loved, and uh, tell me how you got into the place that you got to. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually, I've written, uh, well, four books, but the first book is about that. Uh, it's called Behind the Dolphin Smile. Mm. And, it, uh, I, and so um, in 1955, on Christmas Day, uh, I went with my family to the Miami Seaquarium. Hmm. It was opening day. It was the very first day. And um, at that point, it was the only it was only the third place in the world that had dolphins in captivity on this life. Mm. It wasn't the, the, the multi-billion dollar industry it is today. And so there we were. It was Christmas Day. I, I was on a 14 day leave from the Navy. And uh, my and so th there we were standing along the, the what we call the main tank, mm -hmm. five hundred thousand gallon tank of water, with windows, uh, and I'm I'm got my nose pressed up to the glass and I'm looking at this scene in front of me, uh, of giant sea turtles and fourteen foot uh, uh, sawfish and uh, a giant grouper and and of course, there were dolphins uh, flying through the scene, and and there was a guy walking around on the bottom of the tank in a canvas suit, with a Miller Dunn helmet, spun copper helmet, uh, with bubbles streaking to the to the surface, and he's like in slow motion going through the water and reaching into a wire basket and pulling out handfuls of fish and feeding all of these creatures. Mm. And the music was playing, and it looked like he was dancing because he was in slow motion, of course, when you're walking horizontal underwater. And I was, I was fascinated by that. Uh, and I just, I said, you know, when I get out of the Navy, <laughs> mind you, I just joined the Navy. <laughs> when I get out of the Navy, I'm going to come back here and get that guy's job. That's what I want to do. That's, that's wild. That's a great. And five, five years later, that's exactly what I did. Except my job, the very first day at the Miami Seaquarium, I was hired as a diver. My very first day was on the capture boat. Mm -hmm. And we went out in Biscayne Bay that morning. Biscayne Bay is in Miami. Mm -hmm. and, and we were capturing dolphins. That's, that's the first time I actually put a hand, you know, got that close to them. Right. I actually put my hand on a dolphin. Mm -hmm. We were. We were capturing them for new places that were just opening. We were capturing them for the U.S. Navy. Actually, it was the CIA at that point. Hmm. Uh, they had a, a Dolphins of War program, and we were shipping dolphins to Vietnam. I love getting and, the backstory on this. Isn't this great? This is more than Larry King Live got. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. <laughs> so there we were, capturing dolphins for the CIA. And for the Oktoberfest in Munich, Germany, and uh, different places, and it, it, the whole thing was pretty surreal. And we captured over a hundred dolphins in that year. I was on the capture boat, uh, including um, five of them, which became collectively Flipper for the television series. Mm -hmm. um, Ivan Tours, who was a very successful producer. Uh, had a hit series called Sea Hunt with Lloyd Bridges. Uh, it was a very popular, it was the first underwater I television think I remember that. Mm -hmm. And it had a great influence on me. That's why I became a diver. Um, and so Ivan, uh, when, when, uh, when, when Sea Hunt ended, uh, he was looking for something else to do. And Rico Browning, which, uh, who was, a uh, Florida native and one of the directors of the, well, he was the director of all the underwater operations for Ivan and Sea Hunt and Malibu Run and the Aquanauts and all of these underwater shows that they were doing. Mm -hmm. He and his brother-in-law wrote a script called Flipper about a dolphin and a boy. And I remember Rico telling me it sat on his refrigerator for like seven years. He wow. finally, Ivan bought it. And 
and made the first Flipper feature film with Chuck Connors and Luke Halpin uh, in the Florida Keys at a place then known as, uh, well, it was called Santini's. Today it's known as the Dolphin Research Center. Okay. Um, it, it, and so that was, a, that was a huge success, and they made a sequel called Flipper's New Adventure at the Miami Seaquarium, and that's when I got involved. Um, I was chosen to help Rico because this was the first time historically dolphins were going to be trained underwater. Hmm. Uh, historically, dolphins always performed on the surface of the water. People came in, they sat in the bleachers. Right. And what uh, we're dolphins familiar with. did mm -hmm. tricks on the surface of the water. So now we're filming underwater. And since I had a background as a diver and uh, had been diving all over the Mediterranean and the Navy, uh, the Caribbean. So I got the job. It was like a dream job. I was 20 years old, 21 years old. And, uh, and, and uh, five of the dolphins, as I say, uh, became part of this new uh, Flipper's New Adventure, and then, which was the pilot for a TV series. And I had that job for seven years, mm -hmm. uh, although we, there were four years of broadcasting. I was on the payroll a couple of years before it ran, and then a couple of years afterwards. So that was my experience. I used to capture dolphins and train them. And mm -hmm. since 1970, uh, actually Earth Day, the first Earth Day, April 22nd, 1970, I've been doing the exact opposite, right. which is untraining them right. and putting them back where they belong. Right. Tell tell me about um, Kathy, because that you made me cry this morning when I saw you tell that on a clip. But I think it's, you know, just for you as a person, we know you as an activist, but just the tremendous, you know, what that was that made you do the exact opposite. Yeah, it's hard to talk about. I yeah. must say it's really especially, uh, you know, you first wake up in the morning. But I, I, uh, I can tell you that uh, I live with those dolphins 24 hours a day for seven years, and you become very, you become very attached to them. And, and uh, I never really anticipated that it was going to end. Right. I should have known this is going to end, and, and we would all be separated. Uh, and we were. Finally, the show ended, and... and uh, um, like most uh, movie productions, all of the props go back into the prop locker and all of the costumes go in back into wardrobe and all of the, uh, the things go back where the original came from. And that's what happened with Flipper. Flipper mm -hmm. went back to uh, the normal day job at the Miami Seaquarium for a little while. And then the Seaquarium started selling off these five dolphins because they were quite valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Flipper. Uh, but Kathy, the one that I, the one that I really bonded with the most, and because that, and that's because we used Kathy ninety percent of the time in the Flipper TV series, so she's the one I thought of as Flipper. Right. Uh, three, three of them, uh, we we never used at all. We didn't really need them, but we didn't know we needed them when we first started because nobody had ever done this before. So we were guessing. Right. So there was Susie and Kathy, two of them that played the Flipper. Mm -hmm. uh, Susie was sold off to a traveling dolphin show in Germany and performed as Flipper in the Oktoberfest back in 19, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Kathy committed suicide. I know that's a very strong word and uh, and impossible to prove. Uh, but I don't. I have no interest in proving it. I'm just re right. telling you I, what I, I experienced. I know. And so, did. your listeners should know that need to know that dolphins are not automatic air breathers like we are. Every breath that they take, dolphins and other whales, every breath they take is a conscious effort. Mm. So, if you think about that for a moment. Uh, that translates into, well, if life becomes too unbearable, they just don't take the next breath. Mm. And so that is, that is, uh, that is indeed self 
induced asphyxiation in human terms. Right. And we can't do that. We will take a breath. We cannot hold our breath that long it, that we will do that. But dolphins can do that. Oh, yeah, they do. And I have seen them commit suicide right mm-hmm. here at this cove where I'm standing this morning wow. in Tai Japan over and over again many times. I just saw it two days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're driving dolphins in almost every day now. Um, the, the boats will be going out, 12 boats, in about 45 minutes as soon as the light starts coming up in the east. And we'll be there, and the dolphins um, are offshore many miles. And so the boats find them, and they drive them into the cove. And what happens there is so unbelievable. Uh, The movie The Cove didn't really, well, they captured that on film, but you can't show it to the public. It's too, what you're seeing in the movie, well, what you see in the movie, as brutal as that is, you're looking at the Disney version of what happens. I, I can't even imagine. I couldn't even, I had to look away. I was heartbroken when I saw it. I'm heartbroken now thinking about it. I'm heartbroken thinking about Kathy. And I just want to take a breath right now and just recognize that moment for you. And thanks for sharing that story because that had not easy. And I appreciate that you did it anyways for us. But in that moment that Kathy said, I'm done or I can't take this anymore, that was the moment that you switched. Yes, I'm, I'm yep. guessing. That was the moment where the light went on. And you were honest, actually, in one of the stories or one of the clips that you, you kind of knew that what was going on wasn't great, but you were, you were purposefully sort of didn't want to recognize it. But when that happened with Kathy dying in your arms and sinking down, that was the moment where you got your wake-up call on your one of your purposes in life. And you are... Exactly. And, and I just I want to, one more second. I want to give you like some extreme kudos, and I'm awarding you the Dr. Marissa Beneficial Presence on the Planet Award right, uh, right now because for anyone listening who thinks that they cannot make a difference, if one person cannot make a difference, I want you to remember my beautiful guest right now, Rick O'Berry, who single-handedly in his lifetime has completely shifted um, something that needed to be shifted. And I want to really, really acknowledge and make sure that you are receiving this. I, I know you get a lot of awards, and I know that you cannot help but go back and think about Kathy but I know that as 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 horrible as that was it had a place where you could now remedy something that needed to be remedied on the planet and I and I'm so grateful to you for that so please receive that um applause actually is not good enough for that but I'm I'm giving you a um a Chinese namaste right now thank you Rick Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I feel honored. I feel, um, I hope you feel the love. <laughs> I do, I do, yeah. Good, good, because I, I, you know, I, I've had a lot of great people on, on my show, but I consider this the best show that I have had in 84 shows, so thank you. Uh, well, that was a long time ago. That was Earth Day 1970, and... Uh, and it took, when I did this switch, uh, it took about 25 years just to make it an issue. Mm. In other words, dolphins in captivity was not an issue like it is today. Today, it's a full-blown issue. Thank goodness. Uh, the movie, um, you know, the uh, Blackfish movie. Right, and, on CNN. And so there are... And, and so I'm not alone anymore. I was alone doing this for so many years, but I'm with a great organization now called Earth Island Institute. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so we have a team. It's a team effort. It's not something I'm not the lone wolf anymore doing this. Uh, it's very, very difficult to do this by yourself. Sure. Uh, and I don't do that by myself anymore. As I say, we have a, we have a very good team. We have a lot of volunteers mm-hmm. here in Japan. We have, uh, this morning, we have two, two uh, volunteers, Japanese volunteers, who are 
educating the tourists who come to the cove mm -hmm. and are unaware of what is going on here. Even the Japanese people who live near the cove in Taiji don't know about this slaughter still today. Right. They haven't seen the cove movie mm -hmm. uh, and pretty much banned I and discouraged by the right wing uh, element who don't want people to see it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I have to admit, you know, for myself going through this whole process of awareness, um, you know, Ben Stiller talked about it on Larry King Live, Oprah's talked about it, where, you know, I love SeaWorld. I used to go to SeaWorld. I used to take my kids because I, I love dolphins. You know, I live on the ocean. You know, it's, a, it's an amazing day that, you know, I'm so fortunate I get to see dolphins. I, I, I always say to my listeners, I'll put a picture up um, to, to my clients, too, and I'll say, or my social media network, and say, oh, I, here's, a, here's a picture of a dolphin, make a wish, and that's what a dolphin means. So when I used to go to the theme parks, it was because of my love of the mammal, not realizing what it was doing or this whole industry what went into this industry to bring the dolphins to do these tricks or whatever the entertainment um to to w what that took and when i realized it i completely understand uh what you're trying to do and i completely understand how we can't we have to use our our voice and our actions to shift this barbaric practice. Because what the cove really, the reason why the cove happens is to feed our desire to go to watch uh, performing dolphins, right? Exactly. I mean, isn't, isn't that what the, the, the slaughter is, is the, the after effect of picking the best and the brightest dolphins to come and entertain us? So if we don't want to be entertained by that, then the supply or the desire is gone. And that's what you're doing, right? I, I, I hope that's, I got that uh, interpreted that yeah, correctly. You, you nailed it. It's, okay, it's, good. <laughs> it's based on supply and demand like any other product, mm -hmm. like Coca-Cola or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and if you can educate the consumers, uh, they might not buy a ticket. And right. frankly, that's the only hope. The government is not going to fix this problem. Governments protect corporations, not mm -hmm. people and other animals. Right. And so if we want to see these uh, captures end, then we have to stop buying tickets for dolphin right. shows. The dolphins right. are dying to amuse us who buy the ticket. Right. That's why it was so important. Uh, I flew all the way from the Solomon Islands uh, at great expense to Chicago to do the Oprah show because her audience is the most, and, and shows like that are the most important audience. Uh, Oprah's millions of fans and listeners are the housewives who plan the summer vacation. Exactly, exactly. And so that's what I'm trying to get to, yes. you know, and, uh, because they have the power to stop it. Yes, and, and I think I'm, I'm grateful that I think as a planet, I'm hoping, you know, my kids and their reaction and, you know, they they knew about it before I did. They knew about the movie. They knew about what was going on before I did, that there's a consciousness, that there is a shift in consciousness now. And I'm banking on that, that all things that we're doing to harm the planet are are going to be things of the past soon. I, I know personally uh, I didn't even realize it till this morning. My kids will tell you that I've always said, as soon as they're in college, the first thing that I was going to do, just like you when you were in the army and you saw the trainer in, in Florida, I was going to go be at the front of the line to be a dolphin trainer at the Discovery Cove. I, I took my kids six, seven years ago, and because of my love of dolphins and swam with the dolphins, and they told me that people with PhDs could be put right to the front of the line to be dolphin trainers, and I've held that as on my bathtub list as something to do in the next, you know, four years. And I woke up this morning realizing that I'm not doing that. Because th those same dolphins, even though they are not in a tank, they are still in captivity. And how I could not, and, and I'm just, I'm not going to 
beat myself up, but I'm going to express appreciation to you for waking me up. It doesn't, it's, it seems like such a logical thing, but for some reason, for most of us, I don't think there's that, there's a disconnect between, oh, we're going to uh, SeaWorld and what we're doing to the dolphins to kill them, uh, and to, to, you know, have them suffer in that tank. That other um, thing that you raised around the dorsal fin uh, that they raised in, in CNN, the, the blackfish, as well as what you've been talking about, that that's not normal. That is a sign of dolphin suffering or, or killer whale suffering because uh, that's not where they're supposed to be. And I, as I watch the dolphins swim uh, across my cove where I live and i making wishes on them, how could I even think that that's a good thing for me to sit in an audience and watch them jump up and wow me? So, well, it's quite natural for you to think it's a, it's a good thing because... <laughs> uh, because Hundreds of millions of dollars have been spent brainwashing the public into thinking they belong in captivity. And that was done by uh, Anheuser-Busch, the biggest beer company in the world, who owned, who owned uh, SeaWorld. Yes. And they were the largest advertiser in the world. Right. When you turn on television, any sporting event, I mean, from the Super Bowl to the World Series to a small soccer game uh, uh, on Miami Beach, you would see that Budweiser flag flying higher than the American flag. Mm. And they have people believing that dolphins actually belong in captivity. So right. when you go to these places, and I, in my mind's eye, see you going there with your family, mm. uh, you, you, so you walk into Discovery Cove. By the way, it is a tank. It's a concrete tank tank but yeah. it's shaped it's configured in such a way with beautiful palm, palm trees, trees and white right sand. And sand yeah but put your head underwater and take a look around that yeah. is a concrete box and it's chlorinated well it's not chlorinated anymore now they use ozone but it's landlocked it's it's artificial seawater right it's, it's right. the same water that you get out of your kitchen sink they add salt and tons of of, of salt and so it's, 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 it's artificial, uh, and there you are with your family, and the sun is shining, and the blue sky, mm -hmm. and the water is that magic turquoise color, and the music is playing, and the dolphin is smiling back right, at you. Right, right, right. And so it's hard, it, unless you're actually hitting the dolphin with a baseball bat, you don't see the abuse. Right. You're dealing right. with an optical illusion. Right. And that's why it was so difficult in the early days uh working alone on this dolphin captivity issue when I'm running around telling people there's something wrong here and everybody thought I was crazy. Right. Just take a look. What's wrong with this picture? There's nothing wrong with, right. with this. But yeah. we're learning now. We know that dolphins are intelligent. Free -ranging. <laughs> uh, well, they're free ranging, uh, self-aware. Self-aware means they can look in the mirror and they know what they're looking at. Interesting. Uh, they're sonic creatures. Their primary sense is sonar, is sound. Uh, our primary sense uh, is light. We're visually oriented. Mm -hmm. So when you capture them and you put them into a place like Discovery Cove or Miami Sea Aquarium or Marine Land or wherever the concrete tank can be or whatever shape you want to make it, what you do to them is deprive them of their primary sense uh, you take away from them the two most important aspects of their life, the world of sound and their family. They are more family oriented than we are. Right, right. Uh, we get together, especially the orca, the largest uh, of the dolphin. The orca is uh, a true dolphin. It's the largest dolphin. When they get together, they get together for life. We get together for <laughs> birthdays, and Hanukkah. Right. They get together for life. Right. You take away from the two most important aspects of of their life, and then you have this multi-billion-dollar industry, industry pumping right. out this propaganda mm. that this is a good thing. And yeah. uh, you know, SeaWorld last year made 1.4 billion with mm. a B mm. uh, in profit. Yes. Uh, so the homework. If they really cared mm. about dolphins, if they really cared about dolphins, they would be. Right here, where I'm standing right now, this morning at 5:30, with my two Japanese colleagues, mm -hmm. trying to stop these the slaughter. Uh, 
that's the slaughter and these captures for their industry. Right. right. No, SeaWorld is not importing them anymore. Um, They're not? But they okay, so that's could. a good start. That's a good start. They did. They did. They Well, that's only because of Earth Island Institute. Which is great. Uh, which is great. Threat, so we continue. Threatened to file a lawsuit when they tried to import them to Vallejo, California, to Marine Land. Mm. Earth Island stepped in and threatened to sue the National Marine Fisheries, who have a, a history of um, uh, issuing permits to do whatever you want to do with mm. dolphins. So, well, I'm glad that that is a, a practice that's about to end, and I'm going to take a quick break. I hear the sound of music that's reminding me to thank our sponsor for today. Please don't go anywhere, Rick. If you could, It's just going to take a couple minutes. Um, it's a wonderful company that that jumped at the chance to sponsor you today. Seal Beach Physical Therapy is Orange County's premier sports medicine and physical therapy provider whose mission is to improve your quality of life as it pertains to deficiencies in movement, pain, and function. They exceed the needs and expectations of each and every patient, and I know that is true because they helped me recover from a full hip replacement one year ago and most recently got a torn calf muscle so uh, they helped me with that so I could go teach in Brazil without wearing an ugly boot. <laughs> There's a plethora of super nice staff to work with, including Brandon, the owner, Brian, Pila, and Lynn. For information on their programs or to schedule a free sports injury evaluation, please call 562-598-5500 or check out their website at www.sealbeachp. T.com. That's triple W seal beach PT.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Maurice. to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fay on UVNRadio.com. And welcome back. My name is Dr. Marissa, and you are listening to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And if you've been watching this beautiful woman over here, it is my special uh, sign language interpreter, my new friend, Sharon Pierre-Lewis. I met her at Agape. And Sharon, thank you so much for coming in to the studio to provide the first, as I know it, radio that includes our deaf community worldwide. I know that the San Diego deaf community is absolutely tuning in right now, as well as the National GLAD, as well as the worldwide National Deaf Organization. I am very, very, very grateful that you're tuning in. I actually just spoke with um, Michelle Polino's guest earlier, Marianne Williamson, who has agreed to come on, and Sharon will bring you to uh, bring her to you as well. But right now, my very, very special guest who's calling in from Taiji, Japan, who is right now continuing his lifelong wonderful quest to help us undo and uh, eliminate this barbaric practice of capturing dolphins for our uh, pleasure at SeaWorld and other marine parks. Please... Uh, support Rick in his work, and there's uh, many different ways. And Rick, tell us how we can specifically support Earth Island, support you. Um, the homework, absolutely, for every one of my listeners now, we're over 20,000. I want every one of you to make sure you do not go to SeaWorld or any other place that has dolphins in captivity, that has whales in captivity, because, you know, technology is a wonderful thing. We can see dolphins and learn from them and whales and learn from them in their natural habitat. We are so blessed now with technology and the internet and, and, and cameras in the wild. We don't have to be entertained and be educated with captivity. Well, yeah, uh, dolphin project, one word, dot O-R-G. Okay. All of the information there, if people want to support our work here, it's quite expensive being here in Japan and, uh, it's, it's a project of the Earth Island Institute in, in Berkeley, California. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, uh, 
but you, one of the most important things is what you just said is don't buy a ticket. It's mm -hmm. based on supply and demand, and that's the only thing that's going to shut it down is the people, uh, you know, not buying tickets. Right. I heard um, Alec Baldwin is, uh, I know he's verbal about other things, but the positive verbal thing that he's been doing lately is to encourage the Macy Parade uh, to not have the Sea World or one of the Sea um, Entertainment uh, floats in the parade. So well, again, good for, I, I yeah. wondered about that because my son um, Lincoln, who my assistant and was on Miami Beach, contacted me yesterday and said Alec Baldwin. He was with Alec Baldwin and he asked them, my son for my contact information. So I'll, I'll be hearing from him in the good. next few days. Good. Yes, we can. We can. Uh, we. I can. You can send them to me for some anger management coaching too. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will. Sure. <laughs> that sounds good. I'd love to love to have a chance at at him. He's got a lot of passion, and I'm really glad that he's using that passion for this uh, amazing cause. So we're um, we have a little bit more time, and then we're going to have to say goodbye. I'm going to check in with my Sandy on the chat room, and if you have any questions in the chat room. Uh, please do uh, give them to Sandy or just write them in now. We might have time for one or two questions, and Sandy will text them to me. But, uh, Rick, what, um, let's see, what What would you want? Okay, what's on your Christmas list? <laughs> That's one of my well, favorite songs. What's on your yeah, Christmas it, list? It, it, <laughs> my my uh, nine-year-old daughter, Maylee, and my Danish, lovely Danish wife are in Denmark now. Mm. I would like to be with them, but I unfortunately I will be right here at the Cove. Oh. Um, so oh. what I wish for, I'm not going to get. I wish I was with them for the holidays. Okay. But, uh, well, this this is actually going to be a podcast that will live forever as well as a YouTube. So right now, could you give me, uh, this is my version of Love Songs on the Coast, could you give me a two-sentence uh, love gift on the air for your wife and daughter? What do you love about them the most, and what are you most grateful about them? What have they brought to you in your life? Oh, love. I can sum that up in one word. Mm. Support, love, support, uh, yeah. It's, it's very hard for me to explain that because uh, f f I see maybe the, I, the world differently and it, it really is all about karma and uh, reincarnation and things we don't have time to go into. But when I first connected up with uh, May Lee, mm. uh, she's just, uh, you know, nine months old, but I knew immediately, you know, this is, oh, here we go again. This, this time we're going to get it right. And oh. so. You know, we're, we're, <laughs> anyhow, I can't, I yeah. can't even explain well, it. I can't, cap <laughs> I can't explain it. I just can't capitalize right. it. Okay. Let me try something else. What's your favorite memory of May Lee? Uh, favorite memory was, um, uh, when I was there just three weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, uh, hugging goodbye, oh. you know, the, the latest, freshest memory, I suppose. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful, and um, she, I, I, you know, because of because of the internet, uh, I actually talk to them and see them every day on my iPhone, and it, it's kind of real. It's like I have this iPhone, <laughs> I have it in my hand right now, talking to you, right? And you know, it's the size of a thin pack of cigarettes or something, and and I'm in there intermingling with my daughter and my wife I can look and see mm -hmm. because of you because of uh, uh, Skype right. I, I can see the living room and I can see her bedroom and she's telling me what she did at school today and mm -hmm. and I I'm looking at this iPhone I'm going my god my my life has become a science fiction movie mm -hmm. I mean there they are I'm talking <laughs> to them in real time I can see them but mm -hmm. I, I'm not there I'm here at the cove and they're in this old Village little in Denmark. <laughs> yes. So May Lee, this is from Dr. Marissa. I don't know if she speaks any Mandarin, but I will say Ni the Baba Aini Do 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 Ta Shinzai Ban Ren Zai then I lost my vocabulary. I said that uh, your daddy loves you very, very much. 
and he's doing very important work for us around the world, uh, saving the dolphins. So hopefully she will uh, hear that someday, and and I'm sure she knows uh, what you're doing and how much you're helping people and how proud uh, everyone is. I did check in in the in the chat room, and Sandy said just a lot of love. And thank yous for Rick's work. So I hope you feel all of that. Um, please feel free to check in with me anytime if there's anything new that you would like to uh, have us do or remember. But in the meantime, we will uh, completely not be going to uh, places that have dolphins or um, mammals in captivity. And I, I just... Um, xie xie. Uh, you're my favorite person right now. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. All right. And uh, we will do a standing ovation now. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. What a blessing. And I don't know about you, but um, uh, watching Sharon doing the sign work is absolutely phenomenal and she has such a passion and I know Rick when you watch that later I'm just going to end up the show now with a couple of balance bar announcements stepping up to the balance bar I'm offering a few holiday specials uh, one is my annual retreat to Sedona May 17th and 18th uh, you'll get $300 off the state of Los Abrogados Spa and Hotel as well as $20 off the eight-week balancing your bottom line in life weekly call with me Wednesdays at noon starting January the 15th and as always my 52 card pick me up stacking the deck for life balance with Dr. Marissa our great stocking stuffers I'll be speaking to the California Women's Realtors Group January 8th so if you want to get me on your speakers 2014 calendar you know where to find me for all the details check my website calendar for the links on www.4balance.org and for those of you who are on the 21 day fast from complaining with me Today is day 17, and the balance tip is more benefits of not complaining includes the number of times you have to repeat a negative story. On the fast, we're aiming for zero tolerance of complaining, but in reality, venting may be a necessary life balance activity. The challenge of limiting the numbers of people who know what negative event, person, place, or situation is so that you're not known for your negative life storytelling is the challenge. So today, try to limit your negative stories to zero. All right, that's it for today's show. Tune in next week for my Christmas Eve special where folks donated to a gift to my peace work around the world to call in a love letter gift that will be read on the air. I'll be sending out some gratitude to my love burritos. So listen in to see if you're recognized. And